What we're looking at here is a collection of uh, old USSR thermonic valves. Uh, these tubes are high power amplifying tubes. This one's the GU81M. Give about one and a half thousand watts. This guy will give 200 watts. He'll give over a thousand watts. This little one, a teeny little tri uh, triode there, that'll give about 300 to 350 watts. One thing they've got in common is up here on the anode of uh, each of these devices, we need a high voltage. Now, the transformers you used to be able to buy to generate high voltages are just not available. So, uh, what do we use these days? What is possible? Um, well, we come down to our good old friend, the microwave oven. Da da da! So, what on earth are we going to get out of a microwave oven? Apart from maybe, uh, I don't know, baked potato. After all that cack handed violence, we've got this little filter board with an 8 amp fuse, we've got a pile of screws, we've got a 650 milliamp uh, 5 kilovolt fuse. They are special types with that spring in there for the high voltage, and we've got a microwave oven transformer. So, what we do next is put that over there with all the others. Now, there's a few other ways of using uh, microwave oven transformers to get what you want. You don't always want 3,000 volts, and these guys give out 2,500, 2,200 volts AC. Once rectified up, it's going to put you three th in the ballpark of 3,000 volts. What you can do, and this was how I first came across the use of microwave transformers, is stick your 240 in there. If it's modified without those two, um, uh, the two chokes, the two shunts, uh, you end up with 3,000 volts here. This is at Earth potential. This can be used as a transmission line across, I don't know, a couple of miles. And out of this side, you get your 230 volts that you put in there in the first place. So, it's a bit heavy, but you could literally connect that to that, and you now have a 230, 230, about one kilovolt isolation transformer. There's another way to make an isolation transformer with these, of course, is if you take the primary from that one, and the primary from that one, provided they fit in the same holes, remove the secondary from one of them and swap in the primary. So what you end up with is this kind of deal, where instead of the primary and secondary, we've now got two primaries. That's 230 in, 230 out. Nothing more than that, but it, it does give galvanic isolation. So you can then quadruple that up to about 12, 11, 1200 volts and get about 800 milliamps to an amp uh, out of a free pair of um, micro oven transformers. So what you have to do, unfortunately, is grab one of these and you see this seam here. You have to uh, grind into that about four to five millimeters straight down and then whack it with a hammer and it breaks open like this. So then, if you very carefully take out the, uh, the, the primaries, you end up with a load of them, because all different sizes of course. Here's the spares, one day if I find one that fits in there, I'll be able to use it, or probably just bin them. Uh, it's aluminium by the way, it looks a bit like copper but it's actually aluminium. Uh, so your scrap value on this is pretty much pretty much nothing. So once you've got your two primaries in there, you slap that back on and you weld it up in a most beautiful and professional manner like that. Or, well, or just like that. Either way it works. So there is about a one kilowatt roughly isolation transformer. So uh, anyway, Back to this one. I need 3000 volts today. I don't need 1100. So there we go. Let's see what kind of power the thing is drawing with no load. Okay, 75 watts is disappearing in, well, in heat. That will be the transformer uh, just warming up. Here we go. 80 watts and climbing. So essentially that's all wasted, considering that the transformer is literally just sitting there 
with nothing connected to it. Now, one of the reasons it's taking any current at all is because of the shunts that are in there. There are a couple of electromagnetic shunts and actually two bits of metal. There's one in there and there's a, an identical one on the other side. So what I'm going to do is bash those out with a screwdriver. So first I'm going to try and take off as much of this schmo as possible. Uh, seeing as we don't need it. This is the 3 volt winding which would normally go to the filament on the magnetron. Only about six, six, seven turns, don't know. Can't remember. Not many anyway. So now we can see the the two uh, on this side better than the other. So I'm going to try and bash it through from the other side to push them out that way. Which I personally like to do like this. Screw him down. Let's have him in there. Another one. Okay. So here's the plan. Just to use a screwdriver to bash that out of there so we lose those shunts. Start with the little hammer first. There it is, I think you can see the shunt coming out now. And that is one of the metallic shunts that sits in between the two sets of windings. So now we get the other one out. Usually it's a lot harder than that. And usually we have to get the bigger hammer out, but not today. Okay, so having removed the shunts, what have we got? going through the transformer now. Well, fuck me, we've got more. So, all we do is get a bit of wire through there. Before we start anything at all, try to verify which way the windings go. The windings go that way around. So we want to keep the same, uh, the same winding direction. And literally just get as many in there as you can fit in the hole. The more the merrier basically. Depends on which wire you've got of course. And uh, try to get it fairly tight as well if you can. Okay, I've added a whole load more turns to the primary. Let's see what we get now. 50 watts. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, I think I'll live with that because the uh, with all these uh, tube uh, amplifiers, these valve-based amplifiers, the filament's going to be sucking a hell of a lot of watts anyway. Uh, one of them, uh, the big glass uh, GU81M, I think that's taking around about 140 watts just to heat it up. So, uh, yeah, 50 watts, um, I'm not going to bother about that. All right, here we go. This is uh, that self-same transformer installed in the amplifier. So here we've got the, uh, the HT section. That's going to give me 3,000 volts or 2,800, maybe 27, 26 under load. Got 350 volts and a couple of SG1Ps, or also known as an OA2. There's a filament transformer which was for LED lighting I believe. And here we're getting our 350 volts um, minus 120. Uh, because in there is going to go a Tetrode, the Golf Uniform 43B. Anyway, let's see if this thing explodes, kills everyone uh, and turns into a black hole or if it just works. Okay, that meter there's one milliamp so up here should give us 3000 volts if it gets to the far end so currently we're at zero we're just waiting for the preheat to finish even though there's no tube in there 
I thought we'll not, uh, we'll not bypass that. And we're just waiting for the preheat to be done, and then either the sparks will fly or the needle will go whoa! Now look at that. It's almost up to 3,000 volts. That's what I'd say to a microwave oven transformer. Let's have a look. I see no smoke. No black holes have formed. I see full scale deflection of a 1 milliamp meter with 3 mega ohms between the HT and this meter, which implies 3000 volts full scale. Let's see what else we've got. Is everything else still working? Yep, we've got minus. Minus too much actually. Yeah, I've got minus 150 volts there, it should be minus 120. And about minus 350, uh, plus 350 volts, this is all looking good. But the biggie is that mama there. 3000 volts, job done.